you, Greg and Sean, for this opportunity and for hosting this uh, resource management conference. Um, a lot of the speakers have given great presentations, and a lot of the ideas are very interesting. And, and uh, let me share my part. So, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Eric Chin, and I work for Qualcomm. Uh, we are based in San Diego, California. Uh, I'm a director of engineering, and uh, my role is uh, for the. I'm responsible for the program management related to tools and the process here at Qualcomm. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm involved in the resource management related things. So, uh, for today, uh, I have a few topics here. We'll go through a quick introduction. We'll talk about what is the solution we put in there and what the architecture looks like. And then we'll look at the, our business analytics, the reporting solution, which is uh, which is how the business users get the value out of this resource management solution. Uh, we'll talk about our adoption journey. How did this solution grow over the last four years? And uh, we'll do a summary about what we did well and then what we are planning to do next. Uh, I hope some of this information will be useful to you. If you are a new Tempest user, or maybe you're also a seasoned campus user for many years like us at a large enterprise. Hopefully there's something useful. Okay, about Qualcomm. So um, what do we do? Uh, Qualcomm is mostly a semiconductor technology company. The number one thing we do is we, divide, uh, we design the cell phone chips. So if you ever use a mobile phone, you are probably using our chips and using our software solutions, as well as using our communication technologies. Um, we have been a company for 35 years, and we have been the leading technologies provider from the 2G to 3G to 4G. Now the, uh, the worldwide is transitioning into 5G, and we are the leading provider for 5G also. Whenever you pick up your phone, you use your Wi-Fi, whether you're working from home, you're doing your Zoom meetings, or you are, uh, let's say, the, the hospitals started using to do a telemetry health care, you are using our technologies. So introduction, um, how did this start? Um, Qualcomm being a large R&D company, mostly run by engineers, it's very organic. And um, the way I look at this is it's almost like a gigantic startup with 30,000 engineers. Um, so it's a very organic culture. So what happened was, um, you know, along the way, every group, they, based on your need, they develop their own process and they develop their own tooling. So about the four years ago, a bunch of us got it together because we had some issues to say, hey, when we need to do a uh, higher level project reporting, we don't really have a good way of doing it because all these teams are using their own databases and they are using their own tools. Some of these tools are homegrown, some of these are third party. We don't really have a good way to roll up the entire NRE for a certain project. Sometimes you know one of our project can use, one of the project can be using few thousand engineers for multiple years. So we don't have a way to do that roll up. And then when we try to forecast our roadmap at the company level, we also have troubles. And also the hardware guys and the software guys are using different systems. So there was all kinds of issues. Then we got together, we said, okay, we need to figure out a unified resource management solution for the entire Qualcomm. So we started by um, looking different solutions whether it's our home group or it's a third party. So what are the criteria we want? One thing is this new solution needed to pro provide a clear NRE insight for project in a timely manner. At both the time we review and the plan for a project, as well as some of the projects last for several years, so along the project, uh, you know, along the way, you will have new customers, you will have new features added. So 
when the project is ex uh, executing, we also need to compare what is our project cost versus what we approved for at the beginning, so we can adjust accordingly. Second thing is, we know from the beginning, we have to build an integrated solution. It cannot be a resource management tool on its own island. It has to be connected with all the other Qualcomm systems. The HR system has all the resources. The finance project have all the finance side of things. Product, that's where all our new products are and with the product milestones. Project side, that's where we do project management. So you break the project into schedules and uh, assign the tasks to different people, etc. And on top of this, we know very importantly, we need to put a BI layer. This is where the business intelligence comes in because with all this data, you have to translate into a way people can easily consume and then make a decision out of it. So that's where we say, hey, it has to be an integrated, integrated solution for efficiency. Automation, that's the next bullet. Um, most of the Qualcomm people are engineers, whether it's you're a hardware engineer or you're a software engineer, and nobody likes to do repetitive data entry work. So, so that's where we said it has to be automated as much as possible, um, including bulk operation, right? So because nobody likes a data entry job. The next one is it has to be able to support enterprise level real-time report. So we always, at any time, you know, no matter you are an individual tech team with, let's say, 50 people, or you are at a BU level with a few thousand people, or you are at the entire Qualcomm level with 30,000 people, we need to be able to say, for a project, for a country, for BU, what is my capacity, people capacity? What is my current consumption, right? Where people got allocated to the project? And how does it track against my timesheet actuals? So we use mountain chart to, to allow people to compare this anytime they want and filter down to their group, their project, their country. So that has been very useful. So one of the ultimate goal, we are not totally there yet, and we're still working on this, is to improve the long-term roadmap planning at both the company level, BEO level, and the technology team level. This is where we really want to leverage the what if modeling, and that will allow us to plan out our project and resource needs you know, two, three, five years down the road, and we'll, um, that will be very, very useful. So this is where I will walk through uh, the solution architecture. Um, let's say you have a bunch of campus users. The user typically will use a web interface. This, uh, this web page can be the Tempest native page. What you can see here, you, you can tell it's the BPA flat grid, or it can be using our own uh, third party web page. Our, so we develop a new thing called a Tempest extension portal. It, it is a three tiered uh, application where people can use the Tempest extension portal to do bulk operations that are Qualcomm specific. So, User coming here using these web pages to do what resource management or what if modeling. So here you can see in this box here, we have the campus database itself, right? So this is a native solution. We developed our own extension on top of it called a campus extension portal. It has its own database. It has its own services. It also has its own web portals where people can perform uh, more complex cloning, uh, some of the bulk changes, etc. It's all automated to Qualcomm, the Qualcomm uh, work. So in order for people to use this solution efficiently, we said you know, it has to be integrated, which means we have to pull in all the other data into Tempest and make it available for people to see when they do their forecasting. So what are the things we need to put in? First, all the people, the resources, right? So we get all these from the HR systems. And uh, you know, people 
new people joining Qualcomm every day, people leaving, people moving department. So our integration will take care of that changes every day. So, so which means anytime you're going to campus, you will see the latest set of resources in their refresh. Products. So this is what are the new products we are developing and what are the key milestones? Because when people forecast the resources to a product, they need to know the milestones, right? So in order to meet this milestone, I need to forecast so many people with this skill set to do that work and get it done before that milestone. So we need to see that also. Projects. So these are the projects with the schedules and some additional information. We, we get them in here also. And then the finance side of things. Finance side, you know, you have the timesheet, you have the finance charge code. Uh, so that's where, where we need to pull in also. So we have a data warehouse in Qualcomm. Actually, there's many data warehouses, but I'm just showing one here. Basically, all these systems, rather than doing point-to-point -point integration, we push all them into a data warehouse, and then we push this data into Tempest. So when you log in as a resource manager, you, you will see all your resources, all your products, and all your finance information. Then you can just do your forecasting. And all of these changes flow in continuously. So you don't have to worry about those manual maintenance. So now as a resource manager, I'm in Tempest. I can see all my people capacity by setting filters, and then I can enter my project demand, and I can allocate my people to projects. And once I do that, that data pushes back into the data warehouse. Why do we do that? Because this reporting solution. Um, don't get me wrong, we do, use our, we do use the Tempest native reporting solutions like the pivot grid and also the mountain, the route chart, we use that a lot. But for certain more complex report, we have to do it outside. Um, that's where we go with Tableau. There's two main reasons why we go with Tableau. One thing is it is a dedicated BI tool. It can handle a lot more data. And it also has the capability to allow you to define very complex reports as well as the data joins behind the scene. So this means um, we can generate um, um, a lot of complex visual visualizations as well as we can compare time-faced data. The second reason why we use Tableau is in order to generate this report, not only we need the Tempest data, we also need a lot of the data from other systems from here. And also there's other system I'm not even listing here. In order for this report to provide a better value, we have to combine all those te data together. So that's why it, this cannot sit on Tempest. This has to be sitting on a data warehouse or a data lake somewhere. So give you some example about the um, reports we have. We, I think at this point, we have about 50, about 50 or so Tableau reports overall, but the majority of the reports fall into three categories. The, mo um, the first one is table, right? So people like Excel, people like tables because it's useful. And it's also useful for very detailed data analysis. So here we allow people to come in here, apply their filters, zoom into the project or the resources or the department they care and then um, you can deep dive into this or you can you can basically do whatever you want and also if you really want you can download this to excel and do to do whatever you want um, the key thing here of this table is uh, we allow user to define on their own what are the roles and what are the columns we give them that customization they can control so it's almost like you can define your own pivot table for your own needs. So that's what people really like. In the center, this is what we call the mountain chart. This is the most valuable and the most useful report we have ever done uh, in our resource management solution. So what this does is this allows you to compare your capacity versus your allocation versus your actuals. Um, here, you you, once you apply your filters, you have your capacity line, 
and then each of these mountain layers by default is a project. So you can see, hey, let's say I have 3,000 engineers, and then how am I spending them, right? I'm spending on project one, project two, all the way stacking up. Or you can say, I don't want to show them by individual project. I want to show them by country. I want to show them by department. Or you can even say, I want to show them by BU. Um, or you can say, I want to group the project by portfolio. So people can group the layer controls. So that's another very useful thing people love. The third kind of report we do is uh, comparing time faced data. So for example, you, ha you have a project. Originally, when we approved a pro the project, it has a base budget. Let's say it's this uh, lower line in here, right? How we are gonna spend the, the, the number of dollars or how we are sp gonna spend the nine months across this curve. Uh, each of these will be a month, right? And then later, you know, let's say six months into the project, we got some new customer interest. We are adding more features. So the project scope changed. We need to do a replan. When we do a replan, we re we changed the budget and we reviewed that. We agreed on that. So we have a new plan of record budget. So we want to show that. And then also we want to say, hey, okay, now three four months three months have passed again, right? So what is the current forecast on that project? How does that forecast compare against the base budget? and the latest approved budget month by month. This chart gave you exactly that. Why is this useful? Because this gives us the capability to say, are we always under budgeting for certain type of project? If yes, what's the reason? Maybe because um, when we define the project, we always miss certain customers, we miss certain features, or, or is it because uh, the pro this kind of project involves a certain technology complexity that we don't understand at that time? If that's the case, maybe next time when we plan for a similar project, we need to increase the forecasting in those areas, or maybe we should put some buffer. So that will allow us to do more accurate planning. So, Okay, so we have a solution in there. I mean, the solution, the solution, initial solution rolled out in um, 2017, and uh, we have been constantly working on developing and uh, enhancing the solution, and that work is still ongoing. Um, so this is how our user trend happened over the last three and a half years. Um, we officially rolled out Tempest uh, at Qualcomm here on April 1st, 2017. Uh, yeah, it, when, when we rolled out, people would say, hey, is that a joke? Because we sent out the notification on that day. Hey, here's a new tool. That's how you should do it. People say, is this a joke? No, it's not a joke because I intentionally chose that day uh, just to get people's attention. So when we started, it. Um, this light, uh, this dark blue line, this is the number of resources we started. Uh, this is in the number of a thousand engineers, right? So we started with about managing 6,000 engineers, and then we grow here, and then we onboarded software teams in 2019, and then uh, at this point, we have about 28,000 28, engineers managed in Qualcomm, uh, in Tempest here. And this light blue line is the pro number of projects. You can see we started about 600 projects. Uh, at this point, we have about 2,700 2, projects where we, we, have, we are forecasting people to. Some of these projects can be really big. Some of these can be really small. Um, and then this uh, line is the, uh, the planners. So this means how many resource managers are doing forecasting in the tool. Uh, these do not include any viewers who are the read-only people, right? Uh, because for, for all the viewers, we kick them to Tableau side because they are not changing data. So we say, hey, you just go straight to Tableau. Right? All the reporting is over there. Um, so we started about 
I think 200-ish planners. And at this point, we have about uh, 11, 1,100 people, um, active planners using the tool, changing forecast. Reports, so this is a Tableau solution I'm talking about here. When we initially rolled out in 2017, uh, we do not have a Tableau solution at that time. I think we built our first Tableau solution in 2018, and then it keeps growing, growing. So at this point, every month, we have about 11,000 Tableau um, user sessions. So that's how you can see uh, it has really grown a lot. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about organic growth, right? Um, because here at Qualcomm, as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's a, like a gigantic startup. Um, we don't want to we don't want to um, reduce people's creativity, so we have to give the engineers freedom, and uh, so that's why we encourage organic growth. Um, we roll out the solution to some of the teams, and then. Other groups hear about it, they see it, they can tell the value, and then we start onboarding another set, just keeps going on like this. Global users, um, Qualcomm being a global company, so our planners and our users are also global, right? So a lot of people in the United States, for sure, a lot of people in India, in Europe, in China, uh, pretty much all the major countries you, know, you can think of, we have users from those. Uh, with that also means you know our support team need to be global because um, it's basically a 24/7 thing, right? Um, business and engineering. Most of these planners, they are either engineering leads or they are the program managers. So that that's the primary user set. For the high-level executives, uh, we send them to Tableau because they are more looking for prettier chart and something you, you can easily consume. So that's where we send them to Tableau. OK, summary. So now, um, after three and a half years, if I look back, you know what went well, and what are the things we should do next? Um, the number one thing is clear is Tempus was the right choice as the foundational tool, right? Because Tempus natively is very good, and also uh, with the Tempus API, a lot of things can be done to automate the process, to integrate with other systems. Integrated solution. If there's only one thing you remember, please remember that it needs to be an integrated solution. That is really the key. Because at least in our situation, you know, the, all the users who are PMs or engineering leads, nobody has time or nobody enjoy to do manual repetitive work. So by integrating all the different systems together, we provide an end-to-end -end solution where we pull in all the necessary data for you into Tempus. And then within Tempus, we use the API to help you to do the bulk operations. And then we provide you the overall reporting solution where you can look at the chart, make sense out of it, and then make your business decisions based on that chart. So that's what this integrated overall solution provides value. And when people see value, they say, yeah, this makes sense. OK, I don't consider my data entry work to be wasted, because at the end, I get a value out of this. I can make decisions based on these reports. So that's why integration is a key. Um, company level rollout consistency, but you still need to allow the individual business unit or organizations to have their own flexibility. So, so this is where we say, okay, we say there are certain ground rules at the company level you have to follow. Those we cannot break. Because if we break, we break the entire company level reporting and rollout. But for each of the organizations, for business unit, they have their own needs. So we give them additional custom field. We give them additional workflows. So they can meet their own organization or specific need. Advanced reporting. Um, I already talked about it enough on the Tableau. I think that was a key success factor in, in this overall solution. Automation, yeah. Automation, you know, 
I, I, that's the way you give people productivity, right? So uh, we all everywhere we can automate it using the API. We automate it rather than doing manual work. Global support team. Uh, we do have a global support team in here and in India. So um, during during our night time, if our user in Europe or in China or in India when they have questions, our India team will help them. Um, so what's next? Where do we want to go from here? Um, one thing is, of course, continue the tooling enhancements. Um, we have been on this journey for three and a half years now. And I think there's always the constant user adoption and with, with more and more enhancement people want to do, the development will be, con uh, will be continuing as I think for the next few years, right? Um, what is modeling? So this is one of the area uh, we really want to invest in the next year or so because I can see a lot of value out of this, but what if modeling can be very complex, especially when you try to do this at a large enterprise with very complex projects and all the people and the project dependencies. So uh, that's where we still have a lot of work we need, need to be done. Um, so business rule automation, that is a given, you know, um, data quality. Data quality, that's another thing is, you know, the more data you have in the system, um, the more issues you're gonna have, right? Um, there's inaccurate data. So uh, we're, we're gonna spend a lot of time to, to put rules in there to validate the data and also try to prevent the invalid data getting into the system because if your data is not high quality, then the reporting will be showing the wrong information. Then the overall value of the solution will be diminished. The last part, this is something I have been trying to do for quite a while, but we, our, our developers was always on building new features. So we didn't really spend too much time on this. But the, the one thing we always want to do is uh, rather than relying on the program managers to alert, hey, this project might, might have an issue with budget overrun or feature overrun or certain schedule risks. Um, we would like to use machine learning uh, to, to be able to predict those things even before the program managers can see that. So the reason why I want to do it is because within my team, um, in addition to Tempus, I have a lot of other systems and uh, I have requirements data and all the product data. So by combining these, uh, I feel we can provide more value to our business. So yeah, I think that is my presentation. Um, if you guys have questions, please fire them away. Mm -hmm.